It's Thursday, the 6th of August. My name is Carl Schumann, your name is Matthew Kirscher, and we're going to do another Dropcast. You may have heard of it. It's a podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? You just came back from Greece. Do you have all of your money? Do you still own all of your organs? I mean, look, I had to sell my liver, but I don't drink alcohol anymore, so that's fine. That's not an issue. Nobody ever needed an appendix, and, you know, spleen is overrated. Oh, that's good then. So I'm mostly okay. Mostly intact. And I'm raring to go. I've played no video games. Whatsoever. Not counting the one we just played together. Or at least did a video of. So what have you been <laughs> playing? Um, I've been playing uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist pretty much since Friday nonstop. Oh, have you now? I didn't know this. Please tell me about this video game I know nothing about. Yeah, so Legacy, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist, it released Friday. It contains campaigns from all five Yu-Gi-Oh! series, well, all four Yu-Gi-Oh! series, and then the fifth one, Arc 5, which is currently, you know, being released, doesn't have a campaign yet, but I'm pretty sure they'll release one, because, or at least I want them to release one, because I want Pendulum Monsters, because they seem overpowered, and there's no way to get them in the game, apparently. Uh, I have a couple in my Pendulum deck, and that's about it. Yeah, you get some base ones, but I don't know. Like, you can't duel Yuya to get his Pendulum Monsters, because when you beat an opponent in campaign mode, you get three of their cards to add to your collection, and you can keep going over and over and over again to battle him to get all of his cards in his deck. Right, I'm going to... Uh, you keep talking about this game. I'm going to look up what boosters are currently out for this generation, if you will, of Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, on the market, not in, not well, in game. Well, in game, you well basically you go through the campaign and you earn like duelist points, and then you can go into the card shop and you can buy booster packs af- named after the characters, and they all contain uh, cards like related to a certain type or uh, archetype of so, like you can carry on buying a Yugi booster pack, and you'll get cards related to Yugi, and you can also get the Egyptian god cards. You can go through and buy like cards from the Bakora pack and you'll get zombies and arc fiends and stuff like that. And in the the very end of the Zexel booster packs there's one called Pendulum and I think that may contain Pendulum monsters. I'm not sure. I haven't got that far into that campaign yet. I can't even beat the first duel in that because it's too hard. Right, so the only uh, like proper physical booster pack that contains Pendulum monsters, I've obviously got it in that Pendulum star pack that's at least a while ago, is the booster pack called Cross Souls. So I'm just I'm just opening up that now to see what they have in there. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that the actual real-life booster packs are related to the booster packs in-game. No, they're not, sadly. No, there's, there is a Google Doc listing, like, a bunch of people in the community are going through and listing all the cards you can get in each pack, and I'm too lazy to go through and look at all of the cards to see if any of them are Pendulum Monsters, but I really want to fool around with Pendulum Summoning, because it seems cool. Yeah, there's uh, the the page I'm looking at with all these new cards on, they don't all have pictures, which is a bummer, so I can't actually tell you how many there are, without having to read all the descriptions, but they do all seem to be Pendulum-related, as you'd expect. Yeah. Being the new hotness. Are you building I mean, a deck yet? No, I, I need to build a deck so we can duel, but... I don't know, I'm just really enjoying playing through the campaigns. It's a lot of fun, like, going through the original series and playing all of the duels that I can pick out and remember is great. Yeah. I like that they skipped out, like, the season four? Or season The the Walking Dragon, or the Waking Dragons arc, or whatever it's called. That's the one series I haven't watched in the original anime. Right. And they just skip over that entirely in the game. Awesome. So that's I, I, good. I don't have no idea. I can't remember anything. I can remember key moments, but I can't tell you seasons. I I watched up until they defeated Marek and got all the god cards. And then I skipped until the very end duel between uh, Atem and Yugi. Marek's the hot one, right? With the cool He's the one hair. with the sexy midriff, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really bad that. Do you know the every campaign has a tutorial that teaches you the basics of that generation? So, like. If you play the 5Ds campaign, it teaches you the basics of synchro summoning, for example. Yep. But when you start the original campaign, the first line is Yugi saying, uh, Hey Joey, Earth to Joey. And I just got mad flashbacks to uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged series. Oh god. So 
The Fuck. entire time I played through the original series, I've just been imagining it's the abridged series. It's amazing. God, sir. I Is love it. Wait, am I confusing the abridged series for that episode that was never released? Yes, the abridged series is made by a guy on YouTube called Little Karibo, and he basically goes through and redubs all of the anime to make it funny. Ah, oh, right. I was thinking of the ones where the people died in it, and I was like, that's dark. Season Zero. Season Zero. Yeah, that's when Kaiba had green hair. Is that when Kaiba fucked his little brother, too? Was no. That season I, One. Am I mistaking that? I don't know. I just know Season Zero. At one point, the... Like the soul inside the Millennium Puzzle takes over Yugi while they're in a diner, and Taya's being held at gunpoint, and then he <laughs> sets he sets the guy who's holding Taya on fire. Oh wow! And watches him burn. God. And laughs. I mean, Taya's a bitch. Should have set her on fire instead. Yeah. Look, you have to play as Taya at one point in the campaign, and it fucking sucks. I mean, yeah. How does that make you feel? You know, given that you're the Taya in this relationship. I don't have fairy cards that do like 200 attack. <laughs> That's a fair point. This is why you should build a deck and use your own. That's what I've been doing. It's going well. I have well. to be authentic to the real experience. No, you need to fill that deck through a synchro cards. See, I don't remember how to... I didn't remember how to synchro summon or XYZ summon, so I played the synchro tutorial, and now I'm just filling my deck with synchro cards for that very purpose. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how to XYZ summon, but I know how to summon everything else. Well... I don't know how to ritual summon because I've never done that. I've got like 10 of those hamburger cards I'm never going to use. <laughs> yeah, uh, There's some good ritual monsters, but they're all older ones. I haven't seen very many, very many modern you know, ritual summoning cards. It's like yeah. fusion monsters where it's just redundant now. Yeah, because it's not even worth it. No, it's redundant and really hard to do. But no, Synchro's good. Uh, XYZ is the one where you attach the different materials, isn't it? And then you can detach them for the different effects yeah it's really weird but it's uh, it's a it's a good game i don't know i'm disappointed by the music they've you know replaced some of the best music with some sort of shitty music i found yeah when they when i booted up the game i wanted to hear the 5d's theme song but i didn't and i was kind of upset i'm sure it'll be in there somewhere i know like the winning music and stuff is all the same isn't it yeah i was gonna say the winning music as soon as i heard that i was like oh my god it's back yeah it's it's fun. I don't know. It's cheap as well. Fifteen pounds. Yeah, fifteen pounds, or I think twenty dollars. Sure, that sounds. I'm right. not too sure, but it's if you're a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh, this is definitely worth it. I've put probably thirty hours into it already, and I've beat one campaign. Yeah, I've put a couple of hours in uh, these last couple of mornings. We're gonna we're gonna definitely gonna play some more on the site in the future. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna send you to the Shadow Realm. Do you have the Exodia pieces yet? Maybe. Do you? I Is... have maybe like two or three pieces. Oh god, I hope you get them all, because that's so hilarious watching you try to use them. <laughs> <laughs> I... The... I'm upset that they've banned uh, Pot of Greed, and basically all the cards that let you draw new cards are somehow banned or limited now. Yeah. Like, you, can't, you can only have one golden sarcophagus now, when back in 5Ds you could have two in your deck. So my plan to summon Exodia is kind of screwed already because there's no way to do it effectively. Yeah, I still haven't actually got a pot of greed myself yet. I'm relying on a couple of shards of greed. I think I have two of them, or maybe I have one. Yeah. Well, that's that's why I love playing the one duel in the campaign where you play as the dark hunter that faces Yugi, and he, he just has a deck dedicated to summoning Exodia because he has, like, three pot of greeds, three... Um, Something of charity to let you draw free cards. He has graceful, free grace of charity. Is that graceful charity? Yeah, he has free shard of greed to let you search your deck and draw free cards. He has free trap cards that let you draw cards. It's it's amazing. You can get Exodia in one turn. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. Can't wait. It was always hella fun. Uh, have you played anything else? Uh, I can't. No, I don't think I have. My days since Friday have been spent playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and watching Red Dwarf on Netflix. I saw you were on Netflix, which was odd, because you are a YouTube person for your video content. Yes, but Red Dwarf is not on YouTube, and I want to sit. Basically, I just have my Xbox One on one screen, my Xbox 360 on another one, and I couldn't be bothered, like, 
opening Internet Explorer on my 360 to go to some dodgy website to watch Red Dwarf. So I just wa- watched on Netflix on that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it good still? Is it as good as you remember? I know you've watched a lot of it in the past. Yeah, it's great. I, I love Red Dwarf. I don't believe you, but uh, fair enough. Whatever so, tickles your fancy. How was your holiday in Greece? Do you want to talk about that a bit? Yeah. I feel weird about talking about it because it's almost like, you know, showing the family your photo collection after you've been away. You know what I mean? It's like nobody actually wants to do it. But it, it was interesting. I met a lot of interesting people. Uh, a lot of them American, weirdly. Normal. Well, in the, in the past when I've gone cruising, it's always been like a lot of Europeans, but no, a fuckload of Americans of various age. There was one uh, couple, older couple from New Jersey I ended up uh, spending an afternoon with, which was bizarre. And she, uh, you know, like she knew what the Isle of Man was, which surprised me. She talked about how she'd seen it in an atlas before she'd gone traveling, which was odd. But then, like, about half an hour in, she started going on about Princess Diana and how it must have upset me so much. And I was like, I couldn't deal with it. Like, I couldn't... Fucking Princess Diana was a huge thing, I guess, generations ago, but it just made me laugh that, I don't know, the American thing is go straight to royalty and the tragedy mm. thereof. Yeah. So well, Americans weird. are obsessed with royalty. Yeah, I know. I was like, I almost I almost wanted to reply sarcastically, who? But, like, she never would have got it. <laughs> and I didn't want to... Yeah, it was, it was a weird, weird conversation. And, of course, once you meet these people, you're then... You see them everywhere you go after that, even though you're on yeah. a boat with, like, 3,000 other people. Uh, but yeah, it was it was real good. Great food, great service. I went with the Royal Caribbean again, uh, which is a little bit more pricey than some of the others. Like we ended up on the way over, like fucking flying. Right, everyone has flying horror stories. I was on the tarmac for longer than I was in the air going to Venice, uh, which was annoying, as you'd imagine. <laughs> uh, they couldn't serve drinks. Anymore. Right, it was real bad. So we're sitting there for about half an hour. Like clearly there's something wrong. Otherwise the plane would be moving and the doors are still open. So about like, you know, another ten minutes go past, and the guy's like, oh, "We're having a, we're having some trouble, a bit of a technical fault. We've got the engineers up, so fine, whatever." About half an hour later, guy comes on. He's like, "Yeah, well, the computer's not working, so we're going to go nick one from a from a jet that's not flying till later this <laughs> afternoon and swap it with ours." So I'm like, "Yeah, sure, whatever. We'll be here for another half hour." And then the the captain came over the speaker. It's uh, and he said, uh, "Yeah, well, we're now fairly serviceable." Is how he described the aircraft. It's fairly serviceable, which was quite wow. worrying. But uh, we made it over, I guess. I had fucking delays every time we flew anywhere, though. I had like an hour delay on the way back as well. Because of the fucking French on strike or something. <laughs> but that was less bad. But yeah, four hours on a plane is real depressing when you're not moving. It's something different when you're in the air and you can stand up. But when you've got to sit in your seat for two hours, it's fucking rough. Mm. It's rough. But it was, uh, it was really interesting. I don't know. I met more people this time than I have previously, so that was a lot of fun. Well, that's good. And, uh, yeah, I got a little bit sunburned. My head was crispy today, and in about two days' time, it all would have rubbed off, so you won't even be able to tell. I've been That's why I don't leave my house. I drunk copious amounts of wine. It's worth noting I haven't drunk anything in, like, a year before that trip, so that was... It all went bad when I visited a Montenegrin town, and they gave me free wine, and it was amazing. So, like, from that point (laughs) on, it was just ordering bottles of wine. But yeah, it was real good. I played no video games when I was there. I did a lot of writing, but it was uh, almost all fiction. I started writing some Star Wars articles for the site, but uh, in about a day's time, or the days past when you hear this, uh, EA are having a big press conference, of which some of the Star Wars Yield of Public stuff is being talked about, so I'm going to wait to see what happens there before we publish anything. Let me ask, did you meditate while you were on holiday? I med- I <sighs> Yeah. This is why I realized I hate alcohol still. It's because it's really hard to meditate when you're hungover for a yeah. start. So, like, I, I had great meditation early on, got hungover, had to stop drinking, and then meditation was great again. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I've been going through some rough shit this past, like, for most of July, and not last Thursday, I think the Thursday before, I was just speaking with a friend, and they were like, oh, you should try meditation, it might help. And I remembered, oh, yeah, you meditated yourself, and you said it's really good, and so I tried it, and it felt really good. It is life-changing. Like, I'm not being sarcastic. I was, that Thursday, it was like 2 a.m., and I what I basically did is I couldn't go anywhere in my house where there wasn't noise or something distracting me. Yeah. So I went outside, 
and I just sat in the darkness and meditated for like a good 20-30 minutes and it felt really good like I've tried it since then and it just hasn't been the same so I just kind of stopped but yeah. it, it was really good like I don't know how to explain it I kind of felt like my mind was clearer and like I felt I, it's it might seem sound weird to explain, but it felt like I was taller, like higher up than I was before. Like you were perhaps looking down upon yourself. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, uh I'm still uh, I don't want to turn this into a weird religion cast, but I'm still kind of like learning a lot about it. But yeah, yeah. that thing, um, the part where you had a really good experience and then didn't after that is maybe because you're wanting that experience again. Yeah, You're wanting to get that it, like, rush again, which is a surefire way to have a bad session. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've given up because I couldn't experience that again. Because it, yeah. it really helped, it cleared my mind, and I stopped thinking about shit that was bad to me. It put I me want that from again, a real bad but... state. Mm. So I got to be happy and joyful. <laughs> but yeah, I have some I have some great audiobooks. I'm sure you'll dig into hours of it. Uh, that's really good to hear. That's really good to hear. Uh, med- yeah, don't get drunk and meditate. It doesn't work at all. Yeah. You meditate for about three seconds and then you just think about something else. And it's never good. Yeah. It's not great. But anyway, enough of my holiday. Uh, I lied. I did play a video game. I played some Yu Gi Oh! Like uh, we said earlier. And I've been playing more Star Wars mods. So nothing new there. <laughs> really? I mean, I talked to you about that one, re- one really good one I, uh, I found before I went away. I'm oh, playing yeah. a lot of that, and it's kind of just spoilt me because you know when you get, it's like that's almost like a sequel, you know? It's polished like a video game studio polished it. When you download it, you get this like fucking 500 meg PDF of like a hundred pages of like detailed unit descriptions and artwork and stuff. So like, it's kind of spoiled me on other mods a little bit. Also, like they just don't, you know. Mods take, like, they'll do something really small to the game, like reskin some stuff, and it'll take, like, three years. Mm. So it got me thinking about paid mods and how that might have actually changed things for the better. But then you look at some of the Skyrim mods, and it's like, I'm not going to pay for this fucking horse armor that's red instead of, you know, grey. So I don't know. Maybe Steam's the problem there. Yeah. There's no quality a... control, basically. No, but then there are those moments, like, I think, I don't want to do a video on, like, a three-year-old mod is the thing. Uh, we have no real format for that, but it's got me thinking. You might see some writing about that in the near future. Uh, and what was that? I was try- I was stalling then because I can't find the other game I was going to tell you about, and I still can't think of it, <laughs> which is a problem. I fucking played something. I did pick up a copy of the Star Wars Imperial Handbook when I was in my travels, uh, which is a uh, fucking hardback book. It's really nice. It's like a you know Halo Wars. The mm-hmm. limited edition, you got that notepad. Yeah. Oh, even the Fall of Reach, where it's like, here's a doc, you know, fucking really nice books about really nerdy shit. It's like one of them, it's just a book, it's not with a game or anything. It's like, here's a fucking commander's guide to the Imperial military, but with like <laughs> notes written on it by Luke Skywalker in the margins and stuff. It's fucking, fucking brilliant. There's loads of them, apparently. That's a whole new rabbit hole I'm going to send down. And I still can't think of that game. At all. No matter. Uh, are you ready for some news? Yes, let's move on to news. Well, I wasn't here, so what news do you have? Um, <laughs> um, I wrote a news post about the dumbest thing I've ever seen before in, you know, the history of video games. Yeah. If you pre-ordered WWE 2K16, you get to play as the Terminator. Yeah. It's the dumbest <laughs> and coolest thing ever. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how to feel about it. Doesn't surprise me after WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean they they put out some new details about two K sixteen just earlier today. Apparently you're limited in how many things you can reverse now. What do you reverse is in like um the like horrible system they added last time? No, just like reversing moves like grapples and punches, you're limited in how many you can do. Why? Uh to make it more simulating, I guess. But that was the one thing I had, the one advantage I had over you. Yeah, you reversed everything I threw at you, and I couldn't do it back to you. <laughs> Damn it. It's that wired control, I'm telling you. Don't use wireless. That lag yep. really matters in that game. But, um, 
yeah, they put out. They also put out the uh, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins entrances, and apparently you can now interrupt entrances and attack them. So I'm going to do that to you every single time you enter. So Finn Balor is in 2K16, yeah. Yes, they had his demon entrance on Raw, and it looked really bad. Oh wow! Yeah. So is he completely main roster? What's happening? What's happening in wrestling? What's happening in wrestling? Um, John Did someone last not last Monday, the Monday before, Seth Rollins broke John Cena's nose in a match. Was that John Cena was happen? supposed to face Seth Rollins at SummerSlam for the like, title versus title? I think. <laughs> and so now he's got a broken nose. Good. Uh, Cesaro and Kevin Owens are feuding for some reason. That that sounds like it could be fun. Good matches. That that should be a really good match. Is that going to uh, be a pay per view? Yeah, that's at SummerSlam. Awesome. Ryback is still injured, and he probably won't be at SummerSlam. Uh, that's okay. I'm fine by that. The primetime players are still the tag team champions. How? Why? They're really good. Like they've been on commentary the past two Raws, and they're amazing. Are they better than the New Day? No. This this Monday Night Raw, they were on commentary, and just from their mics picking up Xavier Wood, you can hear him screaming at them, <laughs> your real good fighting champion sat over there. Yeah, that's awesome. But, He's uh, kind of better than the rest of the, the rest of the tag division, really. Yeah, like, nothing's really happening in wrestling. I'm still waiting for NXT. So, uh, did Dusty Rhodes pass away? Yeah, like, months ago. Did someone recently pass away? Rowdy Ruddy Piper passed there we away go. on the I weekend. I couldn't remember. Uh, what were the circumstances there? I just remember reading somebody about somebody passing away. Uh, he uh, had a heart attack. Right. Nothing clandestine and horrible then. No, I mean, there was the recent thing about him and Stone Cold having like some argument about a podcast. Well, that wasn't going to kill them, was it? Let's be honest. No, but... um. The WWE are killing Hulk Hogan, if you've heard about that. I know. That. He killed himself, really. Yeah, it was it was pretty dumb. It's pretty rough. I haven't listened to any of the recordings that are out there. Neither have I, but I believe people. <laughs> I uh, I really don't want Gorker to lose all their money because of that case, and hopefully those, his racist slurs will prevent that. Mm. Why? Why do you want Gorker to live? Because, like, fuck, what's journalism if it's not sleazy? Answer me that. <laughs> um, I guess, but Gorka is like the sleaziest of sleaze. Yeah, yeah, I get that, but journalism is a really weird thing, and uh, I don't keep up with Gorka. But anyone that gets controversial and true shit like that out to the public, I'm okay with. Well, that only came up because of Hulk Hogan suing them. Because they should be shooting one them, of... should he? Really? <laughs> Dumb fucking thing to do. But you like he must have known what was on that tape. Why would he do that? No, there were three tapes. Three. Yeah, Holy this shit. is like because he's suing them for the tape. They had to get a hold of the two other tapes, and oh that's God. when they found it. Why? Why? Would, but he must have known that shit was on those tapes. So why would he risk it? Why wouldn't he just let it pass over him? Or embrace because it? Go the Hogan. other way. I don't know. It's dumb. It's real dumb. Uh, so the real news. Let's not beat around the bush. Uh, Microsoft just had, before we started recording, their uh, Gamescom media briefing. Yeah, nothing particularly interesting happens. One interesting thing, one new thing that caught my attention, I should say. Uh, it started, I think, with Quantum Break. I missed the beginning. I thought that game was, was dead. Sorry? I thought that game was dead. Uh, well, it's Remedy, and they take like a century to create like a four-hour game, so that's not surprising. It probably was dead at some point, but no, it's still alive. Yeah, I, I missed all that of that. I could have sworn they've gone through like four different studios now trying to build that game, haven't they? Are you confusing that with Phantom Dust, that game that really is dead? Yeah, okay. Yeah, Quantum Break is the time-traveling TV slash not-really-TV game, where it's just got it's just a game with actors in it. But they talked about it being a TV show for ages. It's it's confusing. It's not interesting either, uh, in my opinion. And then they showed Crackdown Three. That's a game. Is that what they should? Yeah, they did show Crackdown Three next. Did mm -hmm. you see that, or was that after you chimed in? That was after I chimed in. Oh no, that was before I chimed in. So um, 
it's uh, I think it looks like a pile of shit. Uh, they showed actual gameplay, which was cool, but um, it looked right. It looked really bad, no matter how you look at it. Like graphically weak and super stilted, and the gameplay did not look good. And then they showed full destruction of the city, and it looked quite rad. So that game could go either way for me. I don't know, mm. It was multiplayer, and they were blowing up skyscrapers in multiplayer, and it looked insane. And then they said the words, thanks to the Xbox One cloud. And I realized it's never going to work. <laughs> yeah. Ever. I'm sure it will in the fucking labs or on a stage show, but it'll never work for me. Uh, unless, you know, this November update really does fix things. Which would be nice. Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I and a lot of people were hoping that, you know, Gamescom, the end, Phil Spencer would come out and be like, we've got one more surprise for you. The new UI is rolling out for preview members right now. Instead, he came out and introduced Bonnie Ross, who introduced Halo fucking Wars 2. Oh, that was the last thing, and we fucking, we're fucking like two games in, goddammit. Yep. I was going to work up to that. Uh, yeah, Halo Wars 2. They showed off a cinematic trailer, which was hot. Ugh. Uh, it's, it's worth pointing out. Halo Wars, the infinite... What's it called? The Infinity of Fire? What's the name of that what? ship? Spirit oh, of Fire. Spirit of Fire, yeah. That has appeared in comics, I know because I've read them, don't judge me, uh, since that game, and it was totally like just floating in space with empty cryopods and the flood on it. So who knows what actually happens? It could be really interesting. And it's being made by Creative Assembly, the people who make the Total War games, so that's weird. Yeah, and, uh, there was a leak somewhere on the internet a while ago talking about Gamescom. And the person straight up said that Halo Wars 2 would be there. Did they know it was Creative Assembly? Yes, they, they specifically pointed out Creative Assembly. Alright, I missed that leak. But that's interesting, because Creative it Assembly... It was on a didn't... site that you don't go on. Oh, that site I don't go yes. on. For good reason, if you ask me. For good reason. But yeah, that was the kind of the most exciting thing. That's coming next year, which is a bit better than Spartan Strike 3, if you ask me. Yep. It's worrying from a Total War perspective because allegedly they're releasing Total Warhammer no, sorry, Total War Warhammer this year, which seems way too soon. I thought it was next year, but no, on, I'm pretty sure on that Carl's France Emperor video they posted like, a couple of weeks ago before I went on holiday, it was like this year, this holiday, which seems insane and they should probably put that back because they, they already released a game this year which is ridiculous. And then obviously Aliens was last year. and they're, they're taking on a lot of projects. They've got, they launched Total War Kingdoms Beta, Total War Battle Arena, their MOBA. They've got a MOBA, they've got a weird online fighting game thing, strategy game. They've launched Attila this year. Aliens was last holiday. Now they've got Total Warhammer really soon. And then like next, you know, next holiday, this Halo game, so... I don't know. It seems quite worrying from a perspective of what they can pull off. Mm. Especially when you look at Attila, which was a good game, but it didn't really do that much different in terms of gameplay from, like, Total War 2 or two years before. So I don't know. It's kind of worrying. And they don't make console games, with the exception of Alien, which was not a strategy game. So that could be weird, I guess. And it was it was Windows 10 and Xbox, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I didn't mention Steam anywhere. I don't know, but it'll probably be the only game Sega sells more than like a million copies of this decade, so that could be cool. <laughs> uh, their their fucking earnings were down f like down to forty two percent or something this time. They they reported them a couple of days ago, I think, because their mobile is not doing hard. But yeah, what else was shown at that? Um, they showed some scale bound. Did you see that? No. So that was uh, it looked really cool. It looked really neat. They had uh, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, Kamiya. Uh, oh yeah, um, Hideki Kamiya. Yes, from Platinum. And they showed that off, and it looked rough technically, but it's not coming out until next year, so whatever. But um, again, it had like a light crackdown. It looked, re the movement and stuff looked awful. And the way it played looked kind of bad, but it's super interesting. Like the dragons, giant insects, fucking really frame ratey fireballs. <laughs> it, it looks fucking unique. Which That's is, a Japanese uh, game for you. It is. Uh, and really kind of like I, the main character reminded me of Dante a little bit from Dante's oh, Inferno. Uh, no, speaking from uh, fuck, Devil May Cry. Sorry. 
Devil May Cry, yeah. Speaking of Japanese games, have you seen the latest news about uh, the Phantom Pain? Mm, uh, did they push the release date forward? Uh, no. The Metal Gear Online for consoles will be coming out in October, a I month think... after the game launches. Yeah. For whatever reason. But they showed off some new stuff, including... Um, it was mainly Metal Gear Online stuff from Gamescom, and it's got uh, battles on Mother Base. Cool. Uh, Two player, got, like you fighting me kind of thing? It, no, it's like Metal Gear Online, like competitive fighting on Mother Base. But on what Mother Base? On somebody's yeah, Mother Base or just a I generic? don't know. It must be like a default Mother Base. Ugh. Seems but, uh, unambitious. Yeah, it's got uh, anime on the walls for some reason. So like anime girls. Like I don't know if you can spray stuff on the walls and somebody chose for anime there, but it's Metal Gear, of course. That's a good point. And it also had this weird. I don't know if it's from Metal Gear Online or it's from the campaign, but basically it was. If it's from the campaign, it was just a random soldier from Mother Base invading another player's Mother Base, and when you find when he found Big Boss, he killed him, and the Big Boss hovered into the air and exploded into this red and like yellow cloud. What? Yeah, Why? I don't Metal know. Gear. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, what happened was they, uh, the PC date is now day and date with the consoles. Is what I was is thinking it? of. Yeah. Oh wow. That's first of September. I want to yes, say. Yes, it is. Twenty. Uh, Twenty five days. Yeah. That was some hot maths. I didn't know where you were going with that. I'm like, nothing's out on the twentieth. That's going to be a rough month. There's like four games out, or three games in a DLC that I want to check out mm. between the 1st and the 4th of September. So That's going to be weird to review, because we can't... Do you write a review for Phantom Pain and then a separate one for MGO? Or do you um, write one review and append the MGO part? Does that change the score? Do you ignore MGO? What, what happened with uh, GTA 5? Because... GTA Online didn't come out until much later. Oh, uh, we weren't alive when that game came out. Were By we? alive, I mean the website, obviously. Oh, yeah. So, and that was only like two weeks, so theoretically, by the amount of time we take to review a game sometimes, that's pretty reasonable. Hmm. I don't know. That could be two reviews. We could make it four pages each, you know, like the hottest sites, and get four times as many hits. Does that sound cool to you? Do what they do on, like, you know, when they have, like, top ten lists of, like... Listicles. Listicles, yeah, and each each item is on a different page, we'll do that. If I ever write a listicle and it's not the best thing I've ever written, then uh, come to my house, cut my testicles off, and strangle me with them. Wrap that scrotum around my throat until I die. I didn't know your testicles were that long, but I'll certainly try. I have a hefty sack. So, one other thing they showed off... Um, that uh, may interest you, because I know you're a ravenous Homefront fan, it was Homefront and Revolution during the Xbox media briefing. Uh, I wasn't watching most of this, because I went to get a sandwich. So what happened in that? Was it interesting? The guy rode a bike through a town, shot some people, pressed a button, and and he also used an RCXD. That was about it. I'm pretty sure I saw an IED app on the guy's phone. Yeah, and then the guy blew up a city with an IED. And they're okay with that. There was a little kid reading poetry or something. It's fucking yeah, weird. Yeah, there was a little kid like reading this thing to the North Korean dictators in the crowds. Was oh right. I thought that was him being patriotic. I only caught bits of it, I guess. That no, sandwich he was, was being real good. forced to read it, but it was like secretly when he was like, You've taught us how to work together and then it cuts to the resistance working together to kill a bunch of North Korean guards. Oh, that's that's a layer deeper than I thought Crytek could manage, so that's pretty good. <laughs> I thought it was like they're doing a press release to the rebels, but yeah, fair enough. A press release? What are they what are they releasing to them? Uh, you know, press assets. We've got these hot AKs. Don't tell the Koreans, hush hush. And then Gorka went and leaked it. Fucking <laughs> scumbags. I wonder I wonder what would happen in like a I don't know, if there's ever like a major war, it'd be really interesting to see how the internet deals with it. Won't there? Everyone would just shitpost. Yeah, I know, there'd be a hot load of vines of like, oh, this dude just got shot on the street. He has four vines and a selfie. Well, Fucking so many happened? selfie sticks on that goddamn holiday. Really? Like, holy sh- Fucking Americans. 
really Please like. Please tell me you at least thought of Tyler Breeze. Uh, I mean, no. I mean, because like, well, whatever. Tyler, Tyler Breeze is fine. He can stick a fucking you know his phone to whatever he wants. It was glittery stick or whatever. But I'm talking about like these are standard fucking extendy selfie sticks that everyone's using. Like every fourth family had a selfie stick. How is this okay? Fucking Americans. I couldn't deal with it. I was like getting actually angry. And I was like, why am I getting angry <laughs> over these selfie sticks? What does it matter to me? And they're fucking swinging these. They're swinging the six hundred dollar iPhone off the edge of a fucking ship in the middle of the Adriatic on a yeah, stick. Yeah, that's like the dumbest thing ever. I'm like, God, just fall off and fucking. Yeah. They jump in after it. It was. It was the only. Well, one of the few times I've ever thought these fucking kids and their goddamn selfie sticks. Those damn millennials. And then I realized they were like 40-something, and I'm half their age. I'm getting pissed about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dumb. Fucking dumb. Was there any other games? Anything? Uh, not that I can think of. Uh, they yeah. showed off Halo 5 competitive stuff that bored me to tears. Who gives a fuck? They're having a $1 million competition. World Championship Halo... Championship of Heroes, World, I don't know. Yeah, when I win that, I'm going to spend a million on more Halo 5 copies. Though, fucking Team Optics missed more shots than I do in a game of Halo, which is, <laughs> you know... <laughs> fucking burn. I miss a lot of shots. My accuracy is poor. We're in the point something. But but, I'm going to use that million prize money to buy Team Optics some aloe vera to help <laughs> with that burn. <laughs> I wonder where you're going with that. I'm like, I'm thinking of my nano and aloe vera plants, but that makes way more sense. <laughs> uh, what, oh, what else? Oh, League of Legends. No, not League of Legends. Fuck. Dota is having an $18 million tournament. The international whatever. If you're into... <sighs> you can buy a lot of aloe vera plants and probably a small island to put said aloe vera plants on. Yep. For that amount of money. I wonder... You know, that must be split between the three people. It is 3v3, isn't it? I don't know. I don't play. MMOs. It's five v five. It's five v five. Sorry. So what's eighteen million divided by five? Maths. I don't know. That's what, like four million each. Do you reckon Princess Diana would have liked Dota? What? What? Why would Princess Diana like Dota? I don't know. She was in the hot sex, ta- uh, sex tape with Hulk Hogan on Gorka, so <laughs> thought she might be into it. So I think that's going to do us for this week because I don't have anything else, and I still can't remember the name of that game I played. Really? It's been like 20 minutes. I know, I'm fucking, it's, it's right on the tip of my tongue, just nibbling at me. I can't remember. Can he remember? But we need to go and play some Yu-Gi-Oh! So, chow down. And see you next week. Yeah, see ya.